Hello, and thank you for stopping by. I want to begin by apologizing for not having posted any updates recently. The truth of the matter is, I have been engrossed in this really fantastic anthology, Resist, Tales of a Future Worth Fighting Against. Uh, it's edited by Gary Witta, Christy Yant, and Hugh Howey, and it's just been loads of fun to read. There are a lot of really terrific stories in here, so I expect once I finish reading it, I will probably put up a review um, telling you about it, because they're just they're fantastic stories, so I really have been enjoying it. So, But in any case, I do apologize that uh, I've had a delay in posting an update video, uh, which this is. On to this month's topic, reviewing the May-June issue of Asimov's Science Fiction Magazine. Actually, before I start talking about the issue, I want to take a few moments to acknowledge and say thank you to my subscribers. I have three subscribers now on this channel, and that's very neat for me, so I appreciate you doing that. Thank you very much, and tell your friends. Okay, so, on to the issue. Now, speaking of anthologies, in their editorial in this issue, Sheila Williams and Emily Hockaday talk about a new book that is going to be released, although at this point it actually has been released, because it was released on June 6th, an anthology of 17 Hugo and Nebula award-winning stories from the pages of Asimov's. Appropriately enough, it's titled Asimov's Science Fiction Magazine, A Decade of Hugo and Nebula Award-winning Stories, 2005-2015. to 2015. Uh, There are some great authors that they talk about in this. Let me see. Um, Mike Resnick, David Levine, uh, Elizabeth Baer, Nancy Kress, Robert Reed, Mary Robinette Cowell, Will McIntosh, uh, Ian McDonald, Karen Joy Fowler, uh, really just a fantastic sounding anthology just based on the authors that they've got involved. So something that I would encourage folks to check out, I probably would like to check that out uh, myself. And if I do, maybe I'll, I'll read it and uh, post a review about it. Okay, um, as usual, lots of really fantastic stories in here. Um, there's a great fun one called Never the Twain Shall Meet is probably my favorite. Never the Twain Shall Meet by Peter Wood, a story about a man and his clone operating rival barbecue joints in North Carolina. Uh, the man and his clone end up sleeping with the man's ex-girlfriend, se separately, and then she gets pregnant and hijinks ensue. Uh, it, was, it was pretty clever and a lot of fun to read. Uh, Thought Experiment by James Gunn, and I actually was confused for a little bit, is not... Director James Gunn, this is noted science fiction writer James Gunn, uh, examines the various ways that science fiction writers have dealt with the post-human, from Verne and Wells all the way up through today, and how advances in technology have changed science fiction's view on the subject. For example, defining what the post-human is. Um, a lot of, as I said, a lot of really other really great stories in there, um, but those were the two the one story and then the one article that really stuck out for me that I, that I really particularly enjoyed. I want to take a few minutes also to talk about the March-April issue of Asimov's Science Fiction, which I had previously not mentioned. This issue is, it was a special one that was dedicated to Gardner Dozois, who was editor of the magazine from 1985 to 2004, who passed away last year. Uh, Gardner won 15 Best Editor Hugos, which is more than anybody else, um, in addition to a very lovely tribute in the magazine featuring testimonials from a dozen writers, including Michael Swanwick, Joe Haldeman, Nancy Kress, George R.R. R. Martin, Christine Catherine Rush, Tom Purdom, and Connie Willis, Sheila Williams' editorial, Robert Silverberg's Reflections, and even Jim Kelly's On the Net columns were all devoted to Gardner's memoir, Memory. The issue also reprinted Dozois' Nebula-winning nebula story, The Peacemaker, which was published in 1983. There were plenty of other great stories in this issue. Uh, it's always a joy to read a Christine Catherine Rush story, in this case a novelette called Transport. Also, I enjoyed How I Found Harry's All-Night Hamburgers by Lawrence Watt Evans, which was a novelette about a P.I. searching for a man who deals in very exotic trinkets, who finds an all-night hamburger joint that seems to have a pan-dimensional clientele. It was a very fun read, and apparently there's another story from 1987, which was published under Gardner, called Why I Left Harry's All-Night Hamburgers. I'd like to track that one down and read it at some point. If you've read it and know what it's about, you know, leave me a comment telling me what, what you thought of it. That's about all the time that I have for tonight. That's about all I want to talk about in this one, just covering a few stories 
from these last couple of issues, and you know, I'm going to jump right back into this anthology because it really is terrific. And as I said, I will try to get uh, a video review posted of it as soon as I've had a chance to finish it and digest what some of the stories are about. Um, I will also, I'm currently working on the, what is it now, uh, July-August issue of Analog Science Fiction and Fact. I'm almost done with it, and there have been some really fantastic stories in there. So I will tell you all about those next month. All right, thanks very much, and I hope to see you next time. Bye now.